It's impossible to begin to learn that which one thinks one already knows. Epicetus. Hi everyone, this is the last section of the course, variables, expressions and facts. In this section we'll learn about puppet variables and data types, expressions and conditional statements. We'll also see how puppet manifests find out the most standard facts. Finally, we'll use puppet's each function to iterate over arrays and hashes. Moving on to the first video of the section, introducing variables. In this video we're going to take a look at booleans, arrays and hashes. We start off with variable. A variable in Puppet is simply a way of giving a name to a particular value, which we could then use wherever we would use literal value, like variable string.pp. The dollar sign tells Puppet that what follows is a variable name. Variable names must begin with a lowercase letter or an underscore as shown here, though the rest of the name can also contain uppercase letters or numbers. A variable can contain different types of data. One such type is a string, like PHP 7.0 CLI, but Puppet variables can also contain numbers or Boolean values. Here are a few examples. This is a string value, this is a numeric value, and this is a Boolean value. Strings and numbers are straightforward, but Puppet also has a special data type to represent true or false values, which we call Boolean values. After the logician, George Boole. We've already encountered some Boolean values in Puppet resource attribute service.pp. The only allowed values for Boolean variables are the literal values true and false, but Boolean values can also hold the values of conditional expressions, expressions whose values is true or false. You might be wondering what type the value running is in this example. It's actually a string, but a special, unquoted kind of string called a bare word. Although it would be exactly the same to Puppet if you used a normal quoted string, quote, running, quote, here, it's considered good style to use bare words for attribute values, which can only be one of a small number of words. For example, the ensure attribute on services can only take the values running or stopped. By contrast, true is not a bare word, but a Boolean value, and is not interchangeable with the string, quotes, true, quotes. Always use the unquoted literal values, true or false, for Boolean values. Moving on to interpolating variables in strings. It's no good being able to store something in a variable if you can't get it out again. And one of the most common ways to use a variable's value is to interpolate it in a string. When you do this, Puppet inserts the current value of the variable into the contents of the string, replacing the name of the variable. String interpolation looks like this. When you apply this manifest, The output is printed. Hello John, it's great to meet you. To interpolate a variable in a string, prefix its name with a dollar character surrounded with curly braces, in this manner. This tells Puppet to replace the variable's name with its value in the string. We sneak to new Puppet function, notice, into this example. It has no effect on the system, but it prints out the value of its argument. This can be very useful for troubleshooting problems or finding out what the value of a variable is at a given point in your manifest. Now let's shift our focus to creating arrays. A variable can also hold more than one value. An array is an ordered sequence of values, each of which can be of any type. Here's an example that creates an array of integer values. You can refer to any individual element of an array by giving its index number in square brackets, where the first element is index zero, the second is one and so on. If you find this confusing, you're not alone, but it may help to think of the index as representing an offset from the beginning of the array. Naturally then, the offset of the first element is zero. Take a look at how to declare arrays of resources. You already know that in Puppet, resource declarations, the title of the resource is usually a string, such as the path to a file or the name of a package. You might as well ask, what happens if you supply an array of strings as the title of a resource instead of a single string? Does Puppet create multiple resources, one for each element in the array? Let's try an experiment where we do exactly that with an array of package names and see what happens. If our intuition is right, applying the previous manifest should give us a package resource for each package listed in the dependencies array, and each one should be installed. Next, we'll update this by using the update command. And here's what happens when the manifest is applied. Giving an array of strings as the title of a resource results in Puppet creating multiple resources all identical except for the title. 
You can do this not just with packages, but also with files, users, or in fact any type of resource. Are you wondering why did we run sudo apt-get update before applying the manifest? This is the Ubuntu command to update the system's local package catalog from the upstream servers. It's always a good idea to run this before installing any package, to make sure you're installing the latest version. Before we go forward, let's understand hashes. A hash is like an array, but instead of just being a sequence of values, each value has a name, such as variable hash.pp. The name for each value is known as the key. In this example, the keys of this hash are John, Rabia, Abigail, Melina, and Sumiko. To look up the value of a given key, you put the key in square brackets after the hash name, like this. Did you spot the trailing comma on the last hash key value pair and the last element of the array? Although the comma isn't strictly required, it's good style to add one. It's very common to want to add another item to an array or hash, and if your last item already has a trailing comma, you won't have to remember to add one when expanding the list. Lastly, let's take a look at setting resource attributes from a hash. You might have noticed that a hash looks a lot like the attributes of a resource. It's a one-to-one -one mapping between names and values. Wouldn't it be convenient if, when declaring resources, we could just specify a hash containing all the attributes and their values? As it happens, you can do just that, hash attributes.pp. The star character, cheerfully named the attribute splat operator, tells Puppet to treat the specified hash as a list of attribute value pairs to apply to the resource. This is exactly equivalent to specifying the same attributes directly, as in this sample. So, that's all about variables.